بشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you a couple of ayat that belong to سورة لقمان and they belong within the passage in which لقمان رضي الله عنه is giving advice to his son and typically at the occasion of a khutbah of Jumu'ah or a short talk we begin from the beginning of this passage and we get through the first couple of ayat and the time is up and there's so much more beautiful advice in this passage and in most occasions we don't get around to them or if we do we don't give them enough time but there's some really beautiful pearls of wisdom that uh, Allah Azza wa chose to, to mention in his book and it's very beautiful that at the beginning of each of them Allah Azza wa begins the ayah by saying Ya Bunayya, my beloved son, my dear son Bunayya is some tasgheer, meaning my small son, my young boy. It's a term of endearment by the father to the son. In other words, Allah wants to highlight before, there's one thing that the father is teaching his son, but it's another that he goes out of his way to show love before he even teaches him. He makes sure that the son understands that the father loves him. Because a lot of times, for, especially for dads, it's not on autopilot. Your children don't automatically assume that you love them, especially for fathers. They know automatically mom loves me. But they don't know automatically dad loves me. Automatically they assume dad is usually angry at me. So dad has to go out of his way to say, son, I love you. Then start the advice. He can't just start the advice. And this is, I mean, you guys have experienced this in life, maybe with your own fathers and your own children. Every time you try to give them advice, oh, here we go again. You know, it's because, and when the mother just puts her arm around you, or sits you down and says, come sit here next to me. And then she gives you, you just listen. Because it's mom. You just, you just melt. So the father has to go out of his way to make sure the son listens. And this father, subhanAllah, the advice he gave, the thing, he just wants his son to think about something. And he says, إِنَّهَا إِن مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ فِي خَرْدَلٍ Imagine that there is a mustard seed. فَتَكُنْ فِي سَخْرَ It's this tiny little mustard seed. Little tiny thing. And it's inside a boulder. The seed is stuck inside a boulder. And it could be any boulder. Now imagine he wants him to find that seed. He wants his son to find this little seed. So the son might ask, so where am I find? And by the way, Sahra is a huge rock. A rock the size of a room, a rock the size of this hall. <laughs> it's a huge rock. And what are you looking for inside that rock? A little tiny seed. The first task for the son is to see, where is this rock? Allah, so, the, so his father tells him, فَتَكُنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ أَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ It's somewhere in the universe. <laughs> he tells his son, this, this rock can be found somewhere in the skies or the earth. It could be on this planet, it could be somewhere else, in some other galaxy far away. <laughs> and now that we know how big the universe is, you know how many possibilities there are. And even if we didn't, if we just said فِي الْأَرْضِ On the earth, how many rocks are there on the earth? And now your job is to find the seed. But if you're going to find the seed, what do you have to do with the rock? If it's inside, deep inside the rock, what do you have to do to, to the rock? You have to smash it, you have to break it. So what kind of power would it take to break a rock? And even if you break the rock, let's say you have the technology, you broke the rock. You found the right rock, which is almost impossible. And then you broke it. And you broke it into two halves. Does it guarantee that the seed will be right there in the middle? Or is it possible it's inside, it's inside this half or inside that half? So you break it up into small pieces. You take this gigantic rock, this boulder, and you break it up into rocks this small. Is it guaranteed you found the seed yet? It could be inside any one of those small pieces. You literally have to smash the boulder into pieces that are the size of the seed. And now how many pieces do you have? Pieces that are the size of a boulder. Because if you break it up, it's still that size. And within those billions of little tiny specks, what do you have to find? A seed. In other words, the father is telling his son, there's a secret. And this secret is hidden on top of hidden and top of hidden. 
and it's so well hidden that it's impossible even in your imagination to discover it. Innaha intaku mithqala habbatin min khardal made of made of you know Urdu me kehte hain rai ka dana mustard seed. Fatakun fi sakhra aw fi samawati aw fi al-ard yati bi Allah. Allah will bring it out. Allah will bring that seed and yati. Interestingly enough, in the Arabic language, as opposed to yaj bihillah, jaa in Arabic means to bring something with some effort, some big thing, a major project, jaa, something that's casual, easy, yati. No problem, Allah will just bring it out. Allah will pull it out. Yati bihillah. Inna Allah latifun khabir. Allah's the quality of Allah mentioned by the Father to His Son is Allah is precise. He's subtle, latif. It's a very interesting you know, uh, quality. Just because somebody is powerful does not mean that they are precise. Does not mean that they are precise. You have the power to break the rock, but you don't have the precision to find that little seed. So power itself is, is empty, it's, it's pointless without precision. That's why Allah's power is coupled with His precision, His latif. So Allah describes, for example, when water falls, when water falls, every drip, every, every drip, every drop of water, asaba, he targets it like an arrow is shot. Like Allah knows where every drop is going to fall precisely. Precisely. When the nation of Lut is destroyed, for example, Lut alayhi salam, Allah describes that the rocks, musawwamatan, they were named. Every little pebble that fell from the sky had the name, who's this bullet written for? And where is it going to shoot him? Talk about precise sniper fire. It's coming from the sky with a name on it. It's got engraving on it, this is meant for that guy and it's going to kill him in this way. Subhanallah. That's precision of Allah. So he says, Latif. And then Khabir. Khabir meaning Allah is not only is he precise, Allah is fully knowledgeable, fully aware. He's telling his son this, so the son appreciates how powerful Allah is. And the son has a new appreciation when you know how you tell your children, Hey kids, remember, I'm going over there, but Allah is watching. Allah is watching. And the kid goes, yeah, yeah, I know Allah is watching. Yeah, I know. I got it. I got it, Allah is watching. He wants his son to appreciate, what does it mean Allah is watching? What does it mean there's nothing secret to Allah? So he wants to give him a very powerful example. What we're learning here also is that the father goes out of his way, he thinks, how can I teach my son this lesson? And he went out of his way to figure out, well, maybe if I teach him this way, it'll stick in his head. And Allah likes his example so much, He made it part of the Qur'an. He made it part of the Qur'an, this beautiful example. And of course, this example is inspired by the wisdom Allah had granted Luqman to begin with. Anhu. So now that you know Allah is watching, now He gives him the advice. The first ayah was about Allah, then He gives him the advice. And so he says, Ya Bunaya aqimi salat. My son, pray, establish salat. And Fahunaka fark bayna, Ya Bunaya salli. Lam ya kul, Ya Bunaya salli. My son, pray. He said, Ya Bunaya aqimi salat. Establish prayer. Institutionalize prayer. Establishment as an image in the Arabic language is to build something, it's to make something stand. It's as though everything else can be moved, but the pillar in the building cannot be moved. You can move the furniture, but you can't move the pillars. So in your day, everything else can move. In your day, the doctor's appointment can move. Your work schedule can move. The meeting can move. Lunch can move. Dinner can move. Salat cannot move. Salat is in its place. Son, understand this. My son, I want you to know, you have to establish salat. أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ I'll leave you with this. Once you establish salat, once you understand what it means to make time for Allah no matter what, then there are, there are going to be some effects of salat on your personality. And these effects are not just inside salat, these effects are also outside salat. If Allah will bring out even a seed on Judgment Day, which means Allah will bring justice on Judgment Day, not even a seed will escape. If that's the point, then a Muslim becomes very concerned with justice. 
And every single salat reminds the Muslim that the day of justice is coming and a Muslim has to be fair in his life and her life and a Muslim has to make sure people around them are doing the right thing. So a natural consequence of salat, of really establishing salat, wa'mur bil ma'roof wanha anil munkar. Make sure you encourage and instruct people and advise people to do the right thing. You, are in, you made salat and you go back into the meeting at the office. And when you're at the meeting at the office, they're saying, you know, our client, he's given us, you know, he's got a little, seems like he's got a little extra money to spare, so we should bill him a couple of hundred extra hours even though we haven't done the work. They won't mind, they don't care. You just came out of salat, you say, no, we didn't do that work. We can't put that on the hours. We cannot sign off, I can't sign off on that. You're standing around in your meeting at work and people are making fun of an employee that's not there. You stand up, whether you like that employee or not, it's not right, he's not here. We shouldn't do this. And you say, what made you do that? Why are you talking like this? Why are you standing up for the guy? Because I pray. That's what prayer teaches me, to stand up for the right thing. I'm not going to stand by corruption anywhere else in my life. That's what it means to establish salat. So he's teaching his son, just because you pray, that's not enough. That's because, just because you pray, that's not enough. And it's beautiful that Allah gave the example of a seed. What's supposed to come out of a seed? A plant. The salat is like the seed. But if the seed, you never, want, it never, you never turn it into a plant, the fruits of that seed, they never come out. And what are the fruits of that seed? Amr bil ma'roof wa annahi anil munkar. فَإِذَا لَمْ تَأْمَرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَمْ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ مَا هَذِهِ الصَّلَاةِ What's, What kind of salat is this? It doesn't make you enjoy good and forbid evil. What is that? وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ And then that's the final advice in this ayah. Be patient over whatever targets you. Because when you stand up for the right thing, or you speak out against the wrong thing, in the house, at the office, in business, with business partners, with the employee, with the employer, with the co-worker, with the person you're riding with in the car. When you speak out and say the right thing, they might get upset with you. They might not like what you have to say. Nobody likes justice, let me tell you, around the world. You talk about justice, you get in trouble. You tell your dad, I don't think that's fair dad, I don't know if you should have paid him his full salary. I don't know if you should have done that. Well, who are you kid? Who are you to talk to me like that? Nobody likes to hear about justice. Nobody likes to hear about fairness. So you're gonna have to be patient with the consequences of speaking out. وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكْ And this is a cycle. Because when your patience is tested, you will need strength. And after a few hours, you go back to Allah for salat, and you gain your strength again. And then you go back out again, and you stand up for the right thing again. And you cycle like this. He's turning his son into a leader. He's turning his son into a role model. This is what Islam is supposed to look like. This is what Salat does. I'll leave you with this last bit of thought. When, for example, uh, uh, Shu'aib alayhi salam was complaining about the economic, you know, uh, irregularities of his society, they told him, his people told him, does your Salat prevent you? A salatu tanha? Your Salat prevents you from doing? Your, your, your Salat commands you ta'muru? It, your, your salat prevents or commands you to tell us what to do? Just go pray man, go pray in the masjid, why you bother us in our business? But Shu'aib Alisam understands, salat means that you learn the importance of justice. You learn the importance of justice in the, on the day of judgment, which means you make sure that you become a source of justice even in this world. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us understand the implications of our salawat. All this salat we're making in Ramadan, let's turn those seeds into plants. Let's establish some justice in our homes, in our workplaces, in our businesses.